Strap yourselves in whilst I have a go at the Irish. I'm a Dolan, so it's allowed. Politicians in Dublin spat out their Guinness this week when they discovered that the UK government's Rwanda plan is causing hundreds of migrants to head for Ireland instead of the UK. Ireland's Deputy Prime Minister Michal Martin has said the Rwanda bill was already affecting Ireland with illegal migrants fearful of staying in the UK. I'm so confused. I thought the Rwanda plan was an expensive white elephant. It's cost millions, but sounds like good value already. A policy so effective, it's working before it's begun. The Irish government are now saying that migrants should be staying in the first safe country in which they arrive. Well, we agree. But tell that to France and their president, Emmanuel Macron, who has been raging about the Rwanda plan, saying it's a betrayal of European values. Well, Mr. Macron, I'd say that open borders are a betrayal of European values. And as the French Navy effectively escorts illegal migrants across the channel into Britain, I'd say that your actions are a betrayal of the millions of pounds that we've given you to stop the boats. Meanwhile, no-nonsense Ryanair boss Michael O'Leary has annoyed woke progressives who luckily can't afford to fly anyway by saying that he will happily take the government contract to transport migrants to Rwanda. Fair enough, but I do wonder whether subjecting innocent human beings to the Ryanair food menu, the garish blue and white colour scheme and £6.50 for a cup of tea is a bit harsh. Now, whilst the illegal crossings are an economic, humanitarian and national security disaster and enrich heartless human traffickers, they are not the whole story or even the biggest part of it. The elephant in the room is legal net migration, currently running at around 700,000 a year. 700,000 a year. A recent poll suggested the public thought it was 70,000 a year. It's 10 times that. The impact on the welfare budget and the NHS and on our transport and housing infrastructure is clearly unsustainable. For example, you would need to build half a million houses every year for the next 10 years just to keep up with current levels of migration. And we build a fraction of that with the millions of Brits who already live here struggling to find accommodation. Which is why writing in the Telegraph newspaper today, former Immigration Minister Robert Jenrick has said that current immigration levels are two fingers up to the electorate. In a report published by the Centre for Policy Studies, Jenrick argues that the idea that immigration is a net benefit to the economy and that our public services would collapse without it is a myth that needs debunking. He writes... It stands to reason that if all this migration is rocket fuel for our economy, growth would be booming and wages rising. But since 1998, the first year net migration passed 100,000 GDP per capita, growth has averaged 1.2% a year, barely half the rate in the four decades before that. Now, Jenrick is proposing a vote in the House of Commons to introduce a migration cap, which would serve as a democratic lock on numbers. Who could argue with that when the public were not consulted about the numbers now involved, which are impacting people's ability to get a GP appointment, a school place and a flat or house to live in? Jenrick is suggesting a maximum figure of 100,000 per year or lower. Progressives in the media and in politics, we know who they are, who support a relaxed border policy, should ask themselves how it helps the poorest in our society to have legal net migration amounting to the size of a major British city every year. And how does it help poor Brits living in grinding poverty when £8 million a day is diverted to hotel accommodation for people who have entered the country illegally? Make it make sense. Immigration is a good thing. My parents were Irish immigrants. It's likely that many of you watching this program or listening tonight have come from somewhere else at some point in the last few hundred years. Look at our own prime minister, love him or loathe him. He is a great British success story. Britain has always been a global magnet for the best people. And it's the most successful melting pot society in the world. But this is about the scale of change. 
When it comes to immigration, the dosage is the poison. And current sky-high levels not only threaten our infrastructure, our economy and potentially our national security, but they threaten integration too. Immigration is of incredibly high value to this nation, but it has to happen at a sensible pace, in an orderly way, with people coming to the UK to become British, to offer skills and not to become siloed in parallel communities without even a grasp of the language. The Rwanda plan against all odds may work, but that's only the beginning of the task that lies ahead.